Alo, alo. Hello, we are live. Today is January 8, 2017, and I have with me Elena Kapulnik. Hi, Elena. Hello. How are you, Max? I'm great. We both speak Russian, and Elena speaks great Russian. Привет, Елена. Uh, хорошо, что вы говорите по-русски. Привет, Макс. Очень хорошо с вами поговорить по-русскому сегодня и познакомиться. Ага, thank you. So, thank you. Um, thank you. Today I will take questions in writing in this uh, chat box in my hangouts, and you can find us on Facebook group, Hukola Face group, Facebook group, Hukola group, and there is a link there for participation. Uh, I have with us several people, and I will take the questions in, in writing on, on, on the chat. Um, today, I invited Elena, and thank you for... Elena will be sounding in Russian. Elena um, invited Elena to expand her story. Thank you, Elena, for um, joining us. It's, it's an honor and a pleasure. And thank you know you. a lot. We are... Our community, humancolony.org community, we are came together because we all, all, all of us, we wanted to be taken and visiting, right? Visiting our friends. And that's why your stories are fit so wonderfully. You, you are a star, a star traveler, you are visiting. By the way, um, do you mind, people already know you, so do you mind sharing your website and um, you do the sessions and what, is, what are the contacts? I don't do sessions anymore because okay. um, I find that my energy, like I can sense people's energies quite empathically. So for me, I don't really know how to clear those energies afterward. I used to do sessions for about a year and um, it was interesting working with people, but um, like I can't easily clear other people's energies out of my own auric field afterwards. Like I know cleansing protocols and crystal work, but for me, because I'm very intuitive and empathic, I can literally see your soul spark, your soul essence. So I get impressions about everything that the person is, was, and can be. So, and I have a hard time processing that. So that's why, I, like, afterwards, after I do the session, so I stopped doing the sessions because it would make me tired and I would have headaches. So... It's 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 like because I can sense so much, it's overwhelming. So that's why I stopped doing sessions with people. I understand. Same with me. I I do certain number of sessions, and then I have to go to a Reiki healer and and help have them cl clear me up for that. So that's yeah. my thing. I take on myself, and then somebody washes it away. But yes, it exactly. A... Yeah, it's possible to do it, but because I have a full time job, another job, so. Um, I really wanted to help people, and I'm I'm a healer. I'm I, I I I did I used to do a lot of different things like Reiki, shamanic work, magic, white magic, Wicca magic, crystal healing. You know, I used to do a lot of different types of healing modalities. Mm -hmm. But for me, I find it's a rewarding. It's rewarding being a healer, but it's also can take its toll on a person sometimes if you're very sensitive and if you don't know how to block it, like. Because you could do healing work, you could block all the energies that are not needed for you, and you could do your healing. But some people are very sensitive, so it's hard to block that, to have that barrier. Mm -hmm. So I decided so, to let that go. So what now. is um, what is what? So you, what is your site, and what is your mission at the moment? My site is messages from a star traveler. Mm -hmm. It's a long link, so I'm not going to spell it out. Just if you type in messages from a star traveler in any mm -hmm. search engine, you'll find me. Or if you type my name, you'll find me. Mm -hmm. My mission right now is to help awaken people, for people to know what's going on on this planet, the changes that we're going through, you know, all the energetic changes, you know. Um, also, this thing called disclosure, getting the truth out there as best as I can with what I've learned and experienced and talking to other people that have similar um, open-mindedness open -mindedness as me and who are willing to explore what's out there beyond just this third, fourth dimension. 
like I'm into esoterics, I'm into healing, I'm into remote viewing, I'm into time travel, I'm into visitation with benevolent ET races. So that's primarily what I focus on during uh -huh. my interviews and presentations and on my website. So if people wanted to donate, is there a link for donations on your site? Yes, yes, there is under um, About Us. If people mm -hmm. want to donate, they can. Um, you know, I put all of my stuff out for free. I don't okay. charge for my website. I don't charge for my YouTube channel or for my mm -hmm. videos. I believe that people should have access for free for this information because it, if it helps even something, whatever's on my website or in my interviews, presentations, if it helps somebody, I'm, I'm so happy. There is, there is a page for donations, but it's not a must. It's not a requirement. It, it's, if you want to donate, you can. If you Wonderful. don't, that's okay. We have the same. We, we publish a lot of things for free, but we also have classes where we charge. Mm -hmm. So um, the context, if people really wanted to, to send you something, um, I'm overwhelmed sometimes, sometimes, not all the time. But uh, I prefer, say, say, Skype and email because it is a delayed response and I can kind of save them and answer later. So what's your best way to contact you if, if people wanted to? Is there a place where you would send your fan, fans to uh, send you letters? Uh, yes, you mm -hmm. can go on my website, Messages mm -hmm. from a Star Traveler, and um, contact. click on the Contact Us button, fill in the form with your mm -hmm. information, click Send, and it'll go to my email. That's how I prefer to be contacted. Skype is, you know, I, I first like to get to know people through email, mm -hmm. through the written word, to, to f kind of, you know, um, make contact with your energy, literally, and see who you are. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I do answer questions through email to the best of my ability that I can. And if something, you know, really interests me and if, if I resonate with the person, then I will make contact through Skype if it's appropriate. Perfect. To talk Thank to you. people. And let's jump into the um, stars. Um, so most interesting question people asked and were really excited to hear about your visiting Takur in person. Just tell from yes. whatever angle you wanted that to tell. Sure. Well, I'll tell the story as it happened. Um, mm -hmm. About a year and a half, I was in hospital because I had energy burnout from doing my session work. I didn't realize that what my limits could be. So I had just gotten out of the hospital, and I get this interesting email from a Michelle Solonier, who's a friend of Jim, Jim Charles, who is channels to care and to pech. So, and Michelle tells me, I get the sense that you need a lot of healing right now. Something happened to you and you, 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 you need to come to my place and meet Jim Charles and meet my friends, to Karen Tepech. And I said, well, who are your friends? And he said, they're ETs. Jim Charles channels real physical live ETs on a mothership of the Hukalo colony. So I said, okay, well, I never met Michelle. It was just one email. So... And he said, you know, I, um, if you want a reference, somebody who could vouch for me that I'm not, you know, a stalker or a weird person or whatever, messaging you, I know Brad Johnson, so who is another very good channeler. So, and I said, oh, yeah, yeah, I watched some of Brad's videos and, and I wrote Brad an email and Brad's like, yeah, I know Michelle. And so um, Brad was willing to come as well to visit Michelle and to talk to Jim so that's how I got to meet Jim Charles. Um, and I got a healing session from to Karen to Pech um, because I was having a lot of problems with my hormones and I was, I was having joint pain, a lot of joint pain and headaches. So I asked to care what's going on with me. Why, why is this happening to me? And um, because she, she's a leer in, in, She's a Lyran, and she's a cat. She's like a cat, very tall, big cat. She has um, human characteristics and cat characteristics. And I believe Tepec is Pleiadian, because he's the healer, and um, Tekera is the historian. But she could also read your 
body or energy. So she sensed that I had um, a lot of Atlantean lifetimes. So some of the um, damage to my physical body was from Atlantis. I carried that over into this incarnation, into this physical body. Um, I was a mermaid, and I was, um, during the time that Atlantis fell, I was rescuing people from, from the catastrophe. I was swimming underwater, taking people upwards, because they were almost like drowning in the tsunami from the earthquake that came over Atlantis. So I was rescuing people. That's what Takair to, to saw. And I hit my head on a rock and broke my back, and that's how I died in Atlantis. Um, so that's, that's the first thing to care saw. And that's some of my neurological problems with my headaches and stuff. Um, the other thing that, um, uh, Tepe helped me with is to remove 30,000, 36,000 nanonite machines, you know, nano machines, little machines that the reptilians had placed uh -huh. into me. Yep. You're talking when about I, this. Yeah. When I was four years old. So, um, what Tepe did was he gave me some serums because they can heal you from the ship. They, they have a connection with your energetic vibration and stuff. And after you give them a description of what's happening to you, they can give you serums while you're sitting there and then also in your sleep, when you're sleeping over the next couple of days, they work on you. So what happened is I ended up going on the mothership where Tepec and Tekir are and I ended up swimming in the, these healing pools where basically all my energy was recharged and rebalanced because I needed more than the serums that they gave me. I needed a lot more healing, so I needed to be beamed on the ship. And the way I saw Tekir and Tepech, they looked humanoid-like. Um, Tekir looked like she was a blonde woman with cat with some basic, you know, the nose looked like a cat nose a little bit, but she looked like a blonde woman. That's how she presented to me. And I know that they have holographic technology, right? So they can appear humanoid like. And the reason why that was like that, so I wouldn't be scared of her true appearance. Uh, because she's she's like eight foot seven and she she has cat uh, leering characteristics features. She's she's a big lady, tall, very tall lady, muscular. So she said she appeared to me as a blonde woman because she didn't want to scare me. Uh huh. And and to to Pech looked like he uh, is part aquatic. Oh wow. He had more of his original features, aquatic Pleiadian features, but he still looked humanoid. He also said that he doesn't really look like that, but they appeared that way to me when I was on the ship because people are used to humanoid features. So mm -hmm. for them, it was, they didn't want to scare me or, or, you know, startle me. So that's why they appeared like that to me. And they wanted me to receive as much healing as I could. And while I was on the mothership, I, I saw these various different rooms, crystal rooms. They have this one beautiful central crystal room with all of these different crystals hanging down from the ceiling, well, upwards down to the, from the ceiling downwards, these purple green crystals and it glows. So I was sitting in this room and it was, the crystals were beaming energy down onto my body and my auric field and healing me that way. Cause I'm mm -hmm. used to working with crystals myself. I'm very attuned to their energies. Mm -hmm. That's how they decided to, to, they said, just go to the crystal room after your, uh, after your healing in the liquid swimming pool. So I went into the crystal room and I sat there for about two hours, I believe. And it was just, nobody was there other than me and receiving the crystal healing. And after that experience, um, Takir came back in, into the room and she said, I would like you to meet a Yayel, mm -hmm. which is also a human-like ET species. Um, and she was an earth historian, the Yael, and she told me that earth is going through tremendous changes right now, energetic changes, mm -hmm. and to not be afraid of what, what's happening to my body energetically, because it could be the effect of these changes that are happening on the planet. We're literally going through a transformation right now. 
Mm -hmm. We've gone from third dimension to third, fourth, and even fifth. We're connected with these different densities of dimensional energies. So, and she said to me, don't be afraid. I yell. Um, And just, this is all part of your history. You've done this before. You've helped with the ascension process to other people on other planets. So now you are experiencing this process as well because you've never experienced it in a human body before. This is the time. So that's why you're here on Earth to experience it from a human perspective. I've always been, um, as the star traveler, I've always been in higher dimensions from fifth to sixth, seventh, eighth and upwards. So Mm -hmm. I've never, like I've had other human lifetimes here in the third dimension, like 12th century and stuff. But I've never experienced the ascension as it is happening right now, literally. Mm -hmm. These vibrational energies. I've never experienced it to the fullest capacity and potential that it is. So the Yael told me just go with the flow, go with the energies, and do what you are meant to do. Just do your ascension work, do your disclosure work, and do it in a positive way that helps others and also helps you to learn from what you're disclosing. Because as I disclose my information about healing, awakening process, you know, all of these interesting modalities, I learn something as well from the people I interview from my presentations. It's like when you awaken, you re-remember everything that you ever did in your other lifetimes as a star. Mm -hmm. For me, that's the star traveler and the lifetimes I've had in space, in the higher dimensions, I'm relearning all of that and remembering those aspects of myself and those experiences because I awoke two years ago, fully awakened Mm -hmm. um, and regained my memories. So um, the Yael told me to to go with the flow, to, to experience as much as I could and to learn and work with people as best I can to my ability. So that was to me very humbling to talk to the the Mm Yael. So that was my experience on um, the mothership. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, First question, just clarifying the the story. Um, Where was Jim? So you did Jim's channel and then you visited the ship. So these are two separate events. How, how, how spaced out were they? So you first met Jim and he channeled to you, right? And then yes. you visited the ship somehow? Yes. Well, um, the, with Jim, the channeling was um, Michelle took me to his, to Michelle took me to his house, not Jim's, Michelle's house. Uh-huh. And um, I met Jim through Skype because uh-huh. I'm in uh-huh. Canada, British Columbia, mm-hmm. and Jim is in Rochester, close to the New York area in the U.S. Right. So we Skyped. And I got to, through Jim's channeling, I got to talk to Takir and Tepech. And that's uh-huh. how I received part of the healing and the information about my lifetime in Atlantis, which I already knew. Like, I already, the memory was there and it's on my website, the mm-hmm. mermaid lifetime. So when Takir told me about that, I was like, oh, wow, it's a confirmation because that's on my website. But Jim never looked at my website. Uh, so. He never looked at sites, yeah. Exactly. So... I knew this was for real because of the Atlantis connection. And mm-hmm. Takir mm-hmm. described exactly to me the mermaid lifetime, except I didn't know how I died. <laughs> Takir mm-hmm. described that. Mm-hmm. So, and after receiving the healing, you know, after like 15 minutes of receiving the serum downloads from Tepech, um, they told me they would contact me again in the dream state when I'm sleeping. Uh-huh. Uh, I thought it would be just a psychic co- communication. I didn't think they'd beam me up on the ship. Mm-hmm. They'd energetically beam me up there. Mm-hmm. Um, part of it was an astral. And the other part of it, I believe they holographically beam you up somehow onto the ship uh-huh. in more of a physical way. So first time it was astrally. Second time it was physically being somehow holographically beamed up I had a blonde avatar. I I looked like I was six foot, a blonde, tall woman with blonde, long hair. Wow. So that was my avatar that got holographically beamed up to the ship. I think of it as a physical beam up. 
that still to me counts because I can touch everything, I can feel everything, I can directly talk to them. So they have that technology to somehow make it physical. It's holographic, yet it's very physical. You can touch it, you can feel it, you can talk to them. Yeah, it, it needs a special name, right? Because yes. it's not taking your body completely. The, the body is a physical body, human physical body stays in the room, right? Yes. But they sort of create a copy. But, yes. And that copy is not exact, so it was different copy. And it is an avatar, it's like in the, in the movie avatar, right? Yes, it, yes. It's it like is. in the movie avatar, so movie... Yes. But you physically experience everything there. So there is yes. a link, a strong link between your physical body here and physical body there. And when you receive heat in there, mm -hmm. your local body is is still here. So we need a name, like quasi-physical, I guess. I yeah, can't come up with a better name, but it's like quite a, it's a physical experience for sure. It is but, very much a physical experience because I got to see their architecture. It's like they have this carved architecture on the ship. It's beautiful, and they have healing symbols on the on the ceilings of the ship. Wow. So it's and their lighting is beautiful. I mean, it's this gentle, radiating white yellow lighting. It's unlike anything I've ever seen. So, and it's all soothing. There's music playing in their halls when you walk in the different corridors and hallways. There's always some kind of a vibrational frequency or music playing that is so soothing and healing. It's, it's, it's amazing. I mean, their, their ships are, um, they're designed for learning, for healing, and for exploring yourself as a person, mm -hmm. as a, higher dimensional beings. So there's, you can participate in a lot of things on the ships, mm -hmm. as I've learned, because to, I was mainly in the healing chambers and in the healing swimming pool, liquid swimming pools. Um, but there's other rooms on the ship. I chose to see the architecture, to walk about and see, focus on the architecture because I'm an artist. So for me, when I visually see interesting um, architectural features somewhere, I pay close attention, so I chose to focus on those aspects on the let ship. Me, let me ask the question on architecture. I'm also sure. very fond of architecture. So which human architecture would best resemble what you saw there? I would say some of the Indian temples in India. Oh, okay. Because it's it has the spires, you know, it has those those features. So I would say Indian. And some of the Germany. Um, cathedrals as well. Uh huh. Right. Gothic. Gothic. A little gothic. Yeah. Mm, very slightly different, but same style. So. Um, it's, uh, because, because it is, it is actually connected to ascension. Uh, there yes. was. I, I will explain it. There, there was old way, like thousands of years ago. It was a circle, semicircle. Then when it became Gothic, it became more complex line, which is not exactly circle. It's it's a combination of different curves. And it is about, say, a thousand years ago, goth Gothic. It was huge improvement. Mm -hmm. And then only 120 years ago, they came up with a curve which is called polynomial. And it is a like third and fourth order mathematical polynomial, which is very spiral it kind of goes from one one angle to another it's polynomial it's it's very complex and it is called in uh, human architecture it's called style modern and art nouveau and i wonder what level of complexity of curves was it what did you see maybe it was even higher dimensional uh art nouveau in the spirals Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And a lot of symbols, healing symbols. Um, one of your people on your website actually drew one of the rooms. Uh, it's on your website. It looked exactly like that, but it had more symbols. So I asked Jim for permission. I actually did a presentation of what I saw on the ships, and I published it on my YouTube channel, Meeting the Girk Fit Near Alliance. I asked Jim permission if I could, like, you know, if, what I saw was actually that. So, um, I, Perfect. I actually, yeah, I copied that picture that's on your website and I put healing symbols of what I saw and I put that it's from your website in the descriptions because how, how I work is 
I'm an artist, I'm a photographer, but I can't draw to save my life. Uh -huh. So I use symbols and images of what I see up there and what I physically find here that cr closely resembles my experiences, and I put it in presentations so people could see what I experienced. Mm -hmm. I, I, I add, um, you know, there's the images that I add written descriptions of the experiences. I put music with it that's, that's in connection with those vibrations okay. up there on the ships. And then I put it in a video YouTube presentation. We'll find it and link it to our video. And so look under that video on YouTube. We'll send yes. the links there. Star Traveler, now, <clears throat> the Girk Fit Near Alliance, something like that. Okay, I will find it and post it under the video. Yes, yes. Uh, coming back to clarifications. So when was that visit happening? Um, how long ago? That was about a year and a half ago. Uh huh. When I met Jim. Uh huh. Because. Um, my first contacts with Jim, first time I, Jim started channeling, I think it was May, three years ago. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, about May, June, three years ago. First was this do, uh, which is a Yale, um, how do you say, uh, manager, Yale manager um, and ship captain. Uh, then it was Tepe, who did speak on... Um, um, on medicine and a little bit later Takur, Takur was present in the first meeting but she was silent for about I would say a month she just came in because somehow my meeting with this do sparked her interest so she came but she was silent for about a month and it was like a silent participant she never spoke but Jim was also whatever, who was speaking, was mentioning that this dude was mentioning that Takur is here. And then and then she started to speak, and now she's a main speaker. But as I understand, it is a cat, cat's mm -hmm. property of hers, yes. which means you have to be natural. And to be natural, you have to first be silent and get the idea where you're getting into. And now yes. after you sort of feel it, then you become natural there. So the second question related to Takur is you, you mentioned her species as Pleiadian, right? No, Lyran. She's Lyran. You said Pleiadian, that's why I... Pleiadian I was... is Tepeh. Got it. What is was interesting, recently we asked her um, which kind of Lyran she is, because there are so many kinds of Lyrans. Mm -hmm. And she said she is a Lyran from Pleiades. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. I didn't know that, but... Ah, it comes because out. Are, <laughs> yeah, so so yeah, yields which contact us are from Pleiades, they say mm -hmm. that, and Takur is also from they all, all, all. And second thing we found that Lyrans are not from Lyra, that was a big surprise for me. <laughs> um, well, because Lyra almost fell historically, right. so they migrated to other uh star systems. So I know Takur said that their Lyra. Their planet Lyra wasn't in Lyran constellation. Oh, okay. So um, that's that was a surprise. I thought it was like Orions are from Orion, Syrians are from Sirius, Pleiades are from Pleiades, but Lyran. So that's an interesting question. Mm -hmm. So, so you answered. So a great, uh, nice confirmation because we we heard about these uh, crystal rooms a lot, and some people visited them, and we are so eager to hear confirmations from independent people you are not part of our chats yet right so no. you came there independently and you confirmed greatly wonderfully the crystal room and the healing properties did you meet any of us did you meet any of our community any humans no no i did not um the focus was for me on the healing and i needed to connect with Takir and Tepech. yep so i did not see anybody else um, I did feel a great connection with Jim, that he's the real deal, that he is sincere, that he is the real deal, so to speak, yes, because is, yes. there, there are channelers out there that, you know, they know stuff, but energetically, the sincerity has to be there. And Jim has the sincerity and the beautiful heart vibration to do the work that he does. Being a beginner channeler, I... 
I really understand how can you be not so perfect channel because there is so much me in my channelings. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, Ellen Ginsburg said you can learn even from a bad guru. So even when a bad bad channeler channels, there is a sparkle of God there. There yes. is a sparkle of truth. It's just how much of of say of me comes through the channel and how much of the spirit comes through the channel. And Jim is the same thing. Yes, I know Jim pretty well so i i know even in jim's channel and there is so much of him but but uh still he's so well connected and he's so yes. pure he's like yes. like a child so when complex things come through, through jim i know it's not jim because he would like in his physical mind he is pretty simple he is simple. yes he is and simple. Yes, and I sense the energies of people, places, and I've had other ET contacts, so I can tell when this is real. Like, this is really contact with ETs uh -huh. through the channeling. Like, I could tell vibrationally that it's, 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 it is as it's supposed to be, like pure goodness. It's not, you know, it's positive benevolence. I could tell the difference between negative and positive. Uh -huh. I could tell Girk Fick near Alliance is positive benevolence. Hey, it's a big question which which bothers us. We need confirmation yeah. that they are positive because I, and so I, they have to be secretive. And when people are secretive, you question the motives, right? <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, Girk Fick near Alliance. They actually don't want to enforce themselves on us. They don't want right. to force themselves. They want positive contact experiences. So they have to deal with our earthly government. That's which right. Is, which is unfortunate. But, you know, so it's a slow process of how much they can reveal, how much they can, you know, even interact with us right. on the astral levels and through the holographic technology, the avatar mm -hmm, exchange. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's like an exchange program. Absolutely. Literally. Absolutely. Humans learning from them and them learning from us because we can teach them something too. As humans, we experience much emotion and they filter emotion differently than us. They're a little bit more reserved to care and to peck. They care a lot and they feel, but it's different degrees of feeling. So they learn emotion from us. We learn healing from them. So it's an equal, fair exchange of energies Wonderful. and learning abilities and opportunities. You know, right? That I was part of transforming this exchange program, right? No, I, I don't. Uh, I don't know anything about you. Ah, it's the beauty so of the, meeting. The, the, the story was that when I first came, I was prepared. I already wrote, wrote a book about them. Uh, I wrote a book. Um, I started it in 2009 and I published it in 2011, before yeah, before 2012 yet. So I wrote a book about them and they followed me. And when I started speaking, 2013 May, I think, plus minus, um, the first thing this dude said, hello, we are from the ship. I immediately say, said, can you guess what I would say? I don't know. You, I don't know. I apply for a visit. <laughs> that was my first words <laughs> because I realized how bureaucratic they are like all aliens they have to have a follow a formal protocol so I would apply and they would consider right the human the prime directive of non-interference right mm. yes. right so take me now but um, and, and then when I started considering it was a huge problem for me like would they leave like i know some people just left right and they would yeah. work as a light worker from the other side they would be operatives of the of the alliance and they would come to earth only for a visit and for me it was a huge decision right it's like all people who are you know, you're close to others would you leave the earth i didn't realize they wouldn't take me but uh, that was an option and it was a huge decision would i leave the earth to work from the other side you know, would you, would any of you listeners, would you leave and work from the other side, live on the ship and visit once in a while just for official, not say for official, for operations? Well, I've left and come back many times. That's the thing. But I'm, I'm like a guardian, so I'm linked to the earth into balancing her energies and right. transmuting stuff. So I have a energetic link to the earth. And if I leave, then somebody else has to take that energetic work on and... Okay sub me and you know balancing the energy so because we are all 
living beings in, interconnected to this planet in one way or another. So when we leave, mm -hmm. somebody else has to, you know, kind of take on our mission. Excellent. So basically, I developed the idea that how about they take us and we start a colony there. I call it a colony, but basically a settlement uh, where um, we would explain them our life and <clears throat> form sort sort of a, a, an open contact. But the difference from the past would be it would be volunteers and volunteers would apply on the website. So you really have to like type in your your application and then mm -hmm. the shortest application was which we received was yes. <laughs> but it's electronic and the aliens would read it. So so that started our human colony. And uh, until then, it was individual contacts. And here is a collective mm -hmm. effort where we c communally apply and we communally want to go and we exchange the, the, uh, their information we, we bring back, which is sparse, but there are some experiences, experiencers like you. And so, and I wrote a book which I think um, shaped it. So my book is um, Welcome to Earth, uh, A Guide for Aliens. That was the book. And it, it's published. You can read it. But but so that changed the, the style of the exchange from, from non-public and non-volunteer to public and volunteer. That's basically mm -hmm. the, the, the big change. Mm. Well, it's wonderful. I mean, I felt so peaceful when I was on... Um, to care ship. I felt uh -huh. like there's so much peace and beauty and tranquility. You have the option to sit for hours and just meditate up there. There's there's no distractions, there's no noise, there's no bright lights, there's no distractions. You really have the ability to your, to explore your soul and to see past lives, future lives, present lives, like time is so fluidic on their ships. Mm -hmm. You have the opportunity to explore yourself, who you are. That is your little mission, so to speak, when you go up there. And then if you want, you can share it with them or you can keep it to yourself. They really respect free will up there uh -huh. and your choices. They respect that. They do not interfere with your choices as a human being. They are there to help you learn, to help teach you, um, share experiences if you're willing, and in turn, they start understanding us as humans, who we are here on this planet, what we're going through. To them, seeing this ascension process is the biggest experience in history. So that's partially why they're here, because they're very interested how we're evolving on this larger scale than we used to before. So they're understanding us and we're understanding them and this is like pre-contact, pre-physical contact where, you know, in an ideal world, they would land here on Earth, introduce themselves, and we would shake hands and start physically interacting. But because of our governments, you know, that's, some of us don't even know that there's ETs out there. We think there is, but we don't know. So this is like pre-contact experiences. It is contact, but it's pre-contact. I would say pre-open, yeah. It's uh, personal. It's now on personal level, and then it will be on open. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Um, let's Before we jump to the idea of the open contact, let's still stay on the topic of ascension and dimensionality. Sure. So when you shift to that uh, avatar body, in, what, in which dimension are you? It really depends on who I'm visiting. It, I, I would say I was on the sixth dimension when I visited Tekar and Tepeh. Sometimes I'm on different dimensions depending on the ship that I'm at. I also met the Andromedans, uh -huh. um, the, the Andromedan Council. Okay. So, and th they have spherical ships. Um, and basically, when you're on the ships, they have different levels of density, depending okay. on the type of being that you are. If you need a fifth dimension, okay. that's the type of environment they create for you to be on when you're on their ship. If you're an eighth dimensional being, you have the eighth dimensional environment on their ship where you go. So you can exist in whatever density that you come into. 
So okay. you, for me, my, my, my avatar changes depending, like it changes energetically depending on whichever dimension I'm at. If say I'm visiting the Andromedans, I might be seventh dimensional depending which Andromedans I'm visiting, which ship I am at. Another time I could be fifth dimensional, fourth density. When I go to inner earth, I'm fourth density. When I meet the Agartha network, I'm fourth density. So it really depends who I'm meeting and what density I will be in. And I, my avatar will adjust to that density, to that frequency of that dimension. Okay, wonderful. Um our numbering systems change, and I even made a table from different descriptions who describes different numbers. Like, you know, some people describe our dimension as four, or a third dimension, some call it four dimension, some people call it third density. Most of them call, call ours third density, right? And then the next one up with aliens, they call it four dimension, four density, or fifth dimension, and so on. So, so yes. there is some just numbering system change because it can shift just because of the numbers. Mm -hmm. Yet, um, your description kind of falls pretty close to what Zakaria described. We have wonderful ch uh, channeler and uh, experiencer Zakaria who grew up in, we'll say, it was it was educated in Pleiadian culture, which is great. So, uh, can you describe um, the next dimension up? What's the property of it? How does it feel? What's the difference? How many dimensionalities are? How, how is the time there? Well, as I understand it, the last time I looked in how many dimensions, there was 28 in 28 dimensions in this universe. Mm -hmm. In this universe, that is, because there's, there's multiple universes out there. Mm -hmm. um, and it goes beyond 28. Here in this universe, it's 28, and sometimes growing a little bit upward. Um, it really feels different on scales, and it feels different. Even fourth dimension, when I'm with a Gartha network, mm -hmm. it's it's about, I always feel healthy. I always feel healthy when I'm in the higher dimensions. Nice. I never feel sick. And I always feel peaceful and like I'm a complete person. Mm -hmm. That's the best way I can describe it. I feel whole. And I always have my memories. When I return to the third, fourth density, I get all my human factors back. You know, mm -hmm. if I feel sick, if I feel tired, emotionally, whatever, I always have that with me again. But on the higher dimensions, no matter what dimension, I'm a whole being. Like, I'm not sick. I'm emotionally balanced. It feels so good. It feels perfect to me. Mm -hmm. That's the best best way I can describe it. Can you describe space-time there? Say, in uh, four Agarthan fourth density. It is slow, yet it's not slow, and it's it's kind of like human um, time, except it's it's very relaxed there. It's not like the pace, hurry up, hurry up, do your stuff, go, 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 go. It's much more slower, and it's a it's a it's a nice mixture of dynamics because the Agartha network, the way they do their stuff in their cities, is it's all balanced according mm -hmm. to your soul level of what you want to do and try here mm -hmm. in the third dimen dimension it's like you have to have this job you have to pass tests to have your job and you know you have to pass tests to even apply for university in agartha network is there's no testing you just go for whatever job you want and you try it out and then you can rotate jobs and try something else out and what you want to learn so I'd say it's an even pace. It's a nice pace of time. Okay, you don't no. go you don't go looking at the clock. Well, I have to hurry up and be there like in an hour. It's not like that. Uh -huh. It's that's all smooth. Smooth. I would say it's smooth. Yeah, that's what Bashar describes. Uh, he does they don't use calendars, they don't no. use even watches. They rely on synchronicity completely. Yes. They have like an internal chronometer inside themselves where they could tell the flow of time and they're like they know where they're going to be and how it's going to be but it's not based on an hour or two hours it's based on just being and experiencing the experience to its fullest potential and enjoying what you're doing without all the hardship that's that's the agartha network 
work in their fourth density. Um, Wilcock, David Wilcock, who I admire, I hypothesize that in the next, in that next dimension or next density, there is multiple dimensionalities of time, multiple degrees of freedom of time. So you can move in time not only forward, but backward, right, left, up, down. Did you experience any of that? Yes, yes. Um, I personally, I, what, when I walked through the Agartha Network corridors, this was under Mount Shasta in the city called Telos. They have in their corridors underground, they have different um, doors. They have a force field, but if you open the door, you can go through a portal mm -hmm. to another dimension or to another planet. And mm -hmm. that has a different time frequency, uh -huh. their portal ways. So, and you experience, you may experience in time slower, faster, quicker. Um, it also depends on your awareness of fluidic time, on your awareness scale, how far you can experiencing experience it in with your human mind when i'm up there like it's actually underground not up it's underground in inner earth i don't feel pressure on myself to do something quickly or slowly it just is i have as much um i don't want to say time i have as much what's the word for it credit Yes, credit. Okay, I have as much credit as I need to do what I want to do and not feel pressured to do it. No pressure at all. So there's no no limit. Okay, no limit to what I want to do or however long I want to do it. They don't put limits on this is how much you need to spend doing this or that. You're given the the the, the ability to explore as much as you need. Um, can you describe space there? What's different about space and matter? Space and matter? Well, from a from a physical perspective, I would say there's no trash. Mm -hmm. There's no pollution. Everything is clean and beautiful. You know, mm -hmm. their outdoor gardens, the animals are, they roam around freely in the parks. They don't attack you because they don't eat you. They don't the animals don't have the need to feed on you because vibrationally they have everything that they need for their own food sources so they don't go after you in the park. Like, hey, they have saber-toothed tigers walking around in the park sanctuary. You come face to face with it, it's not going to eat you because it doesn't need to. It has everything it needs vibrationally to sustain itself in its living environment. And they also have everything they need physically to sustain themselves like they're vibrationally balanced with food, with um, living energy. They hardly ever get sick. Their lifespan is like, goes up to a thousand years mm -hmm. in inner earth. So they are vibrationally in tune with time itself. They, they read the energies of space, time and matter. And they're not, it's not chaotic down there. On the surface of our planet, sometimes it's chaotic. And you get distracted and you know you're not fully in balance they are fully harmonically aligned in balance vibrationally their their soul is pure basically no sickness no tiredness less sleep vibrationally aligned mm -hmm. that's how i'd say it is their time mm -hmm. is vibrationally aligned on all phases on the energetic levels it's aligned. It's all in alignment. Uh, there are very important questions which I wanted to ask. <clears throat> and the closest to where we are now is, we just heard recently about the fourth dimensional Earth, the future Earth. Uh, do, you know, do you know a name for it? We just got the name, so I wanted to share it. But I want to ask you first if you know the name for the future Earth. Gaia Ascended. or Tara. Gaia or Tara. Perfect. Uh, Perfect. Uh, what was named uh, to us was Terra Ha, which is basically future te Terra. Terra is the name of now of the Earth now, right? Yes. Gaia, Terra, and Earth are three three names we, we often use. And um, Terra Ha is basically the future Earth. So, 
and we are sending to it basically mm -hmm. and um, have you visited it do you know how it looks any any information about it i've had glimpses of it i visited mm -hmm. it briefly mm -hmm. the beautiful forests everything is forest the everything there's so many ocean masses forests beautiful colors wherever you look you literally could touch the energy and feel the color what you're touching when you're there like you go like this uh, oh, you could feel the energy of that that planet mm -hmm. you've graduated and you don't have the sense of chaos the sense of pressure you know you can explore yourself as a being when you're there there's no there's no what is here right now no pollution no crime you know, even the way the houses are built, it's all organic. It's it's all organic from what there is, you know. It's not concrete. It's not cold cement. The buildings on Tara are built differently using natural resources. Because it's not, it's not concrete and cement. It's different. Is it wood? Some of it is wood, some of it is other things that you can co-create from the energy. Basically, you could pull from the energy building materials that are organic. Like you look into your head and you kind of know psychically what you need without having to know why you need it. It's just there for you energetically to feel the energy and create something amazing um yeah. you just you just confirmed what we heard um in some extent it was um so how many humans are there do you know uh, earth humans uh, how many people already made it how many people already ascended do you have any clue no um, um did, did you meet any people there any beings there i was aware of living living energies that felt like humans but it was a personal experience. It's a really personal experience for me just to, I would say it's not very easy for me to access that dimension because mm -hmm. I'm still very much linked to this third, fourth dimensional aspect of everyday living. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's how much your vibrational energy level is raised. Because sometimes I'm in flux, sometimes I go lower, sometimes I go higher based on what I'm going through physically and this in this place that we're in now um so sometimes i have more access to tara sometimes i have less access it really depends on how i am vibrationally yes um hold on i will mute kira kina just somehow she's interviewed okay all right so the question is um what is dimensionality there is it how different is it from our and how different is it from Agartha? I would say the um, dimensionality is instantaneous. You have the ability to manifest what you're thinking. As long as it's positive thinking, you can manifest it if it's for the highest good of yourself and others in your soul group that are around you. You can't manifest bad things because that's energetically not in line with that dimension. And you have the inner knowing of who you are as a person. You're not living in amnesia and slowly discovering who you are. You already know your um, your lifetimes. You have access. If you want to know about your lifetimes, you have instant universal knowledge access to that. Mm -hmm. You can just tap in, I want to see this, this, and this from that lifetime you can instantly tap into it and see those memories. And you feel like you're actually living those memories in live action. You can see it as a picture and explore it. You know, it's like you're walking in that life and experiencing it. That's how you have interaction with that lifetime. It's very organic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's on an earth. Everything in that dimension is very organic and clean and peaceful. Mm -hmm. um, people still argue. People still have differences of opinion. You can in that dimension, um, but there's no um, consequences to mm -hmm. arguing. You know, there's no there's no bad karma. Hmm. 
you can talk it out civilly, you can argue, but there's no karma. Oh my God, I feel your bad energy and you feel my bad energy. There's no, there's no, you know, no shaking when that happens. It's, it's peacefully. It's done peacefully. Um, it's like, <laughs> it's like visiting your grandmother. Everything is permitted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, as long as it's done for the highest good, like you, they don't have nuclear weapons there. You don't need weapons. You have everything you need for your protection energetically because you yourself um, can shift the vibration. If you need protection, you can just put up an energy shield around you. And the other person can't hit you like this. There's a shield in front of you so you can create. You have a higher knowledge of your body and what you're capable of doing on Tahara. So, you know, if somebody tries to hit you in the head, they won't be able to because you put up an energy shield. But that energy shield will not zap the other person. It'll just, you know, protect you from being hit. Um, people describe, so what, what dimension would that be or what density? I would say fourth, fifth to even the sixth. There's pockets of the sixth dimension sure, there. Sure, So it's really pockets, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Or you can shift your attention or focus yes. of attention from one to another. Yes. Um, people describe that uh, reality. First, they mentioned you can walk through the walls. Is it right? Yes. Yeah. You can literally um, change the molecular structure of your body to be partially energy and mm -hmm. to phase in and out of places mm -hmm. to walk mm -hmm. phase in and out. I call walking through wall mm -hmm. and then you, you uh, retransmute yourself into the physical form. So then they don't need the doors. Uh, you can have doors for privacy if you want, and you can energetically put on your home a shield uh -huh. right now. I am busy. It's an energetic vibration around your home. Right now I am busy. So therefore, you cannot just walk through a wall to mm -hmm. meet me. Mm -hmm. There's an energetic vibration saying, it's, okay, you know, if you have, I'll use an earth term analogy. If you're living in a university dorm, right, mm -hmm. and you, you have roommates in your dorm, you put up a sock on your door saying, the sock is a signal, I'm, do not disturb right now because I'm busy or I'm having an experience, you know. It's same with, with the housing on Tara, except it's energetic. There's like an energetic shield. Right now, I am whatever. You can't just phase in through the wall. Excellent. Uh, another question I had, um, people mentioned that you can shift in time back and forth a little bit. Can you comment on that? Yeah, um, you have glimpses of your own future. You have glimpses of other people's futures. Like you can literally see the soul on the soul level, other people, and you can communicate with them on the soul level back and forth. You don't need telephones or smartphones to do that. You just energetically talk to each other. So you can see like for my, for myself, I, I never, almost never see my own future, but you can be three steps ahead on Tahara, three steps ahead in in what you plan out to do and how it's going to turn out. You can literally plan it out without having any problems on your steps to accomplishing something. So it's like you can see three steps forward. Wonderful. Um, I noticed in the video, uh, sometimes when the connection is kind of shifting, the dimensionality is shifting, uh, people uh, change their appearance. You just shifted into your light body. So people who are watching and recording, you can scroll up about 20 seconds backwards, you will see um, Elena shift into a light body. It was wonderful. What color uh, was I? What, what did my uh, light it body? Was just shining. It was just shining and ethereal. Hmm. It was beautiful. Well, you changed you. the color, you changed, you became white and whitish, like, um, you know, like an angel. It was wonderful. Thank and you. Your hair changed the color too. Interesting. Yeah. Sometimes people show the smoke from their head when they're scared, but it's it's the other way around. You you showed um, the positive. You kind of connected to the idea of of the future Earth. By some reason, you named it differently. You named it Tahara. Was it yes. conscious? 
No, it's I'm having a hard time pronouncing it correctly. I don't know. We just learned the name, so it was Tara Ha, and you called it Tara, and now you called it Tahara. It will, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll verify. That's okay, and maybe yeah. the name is not formed yet. <laughs> so maybe. next question, huge question is, um, when and uh, is it individual? How will we shift? Will we shift collectively, or how will it happen? What is your feeling? Uh, some people will shift collectively in, in in their family groups, soul groups, and friends and family, and um, you know, and other acquaintances. And some will shift very much individually. It really depends on your soul level of what you're ready to experience and why, and your reasons for wanting to go to New Earth. It's also um, depends on your reasons. Some people are very much attached to here right now as it is. And they're quite interested in exploring the here and the now on this earth. And some people who are awakened, they want to see and hear more. So they're ready to shift. Mm -hmm. And it'll happen differently for everybody. Some will shift in groups. Some will shift just as them individually. So it's really depending on your soul factors, I would say, and vibrational frequencies. Uh, when will it happen? It'll happen when it's supposed to happen for you. There's not a when specifically. All right. Will it happen in this century, 21st, and next century, century after it, next? It really depends on the people, on what you need and what you want. All right. So I can't... Uh, any biological it's not process, linear. Okay. Any biological process goes through the maximum. And yeah. sometimes it's a sharp peak. Sometimes it's kind of spread over years. Um, we are, I mean, that's that's the main question, right? The main practical question. Are we shifting in this lifetime or next? Uh, our children might shift later. When is it? When is the ascension due for the whole humanity? And how many people will stay? And how many people do you have any clues how to approach this answer? Ascension is not dependent on the collective consciousness. It is dependent on us as individual beings or us as a collective group. It's really not a one-stop shop process. Okay. For one person, ascension happens faster. For another pro person or group, it happens slower. It really depends on what you're ready for mm -hmm. to experience. Um, I experienced many different levels of ascension. I go back and forth from lower vibration to higher vibration. Sometimes I even go to, pardon my French, to the crap vibration and all over the place. And I've seen the most beautiful things I could ever see in the higher dimensions, sometimes even in the lower dimensions. So it's really, there's no one time limit. It's not a limit in time, whether you shift in this century or next century. It's, it's really what you're ready for, what your soul is ready to experience. If you're tired of being on this plane with the chaos and the violence and da-da-da, you're just ready to go. Your vibration is high enough that you're ready to go. And you tap into that Tara energy and you just go because you're ready to be in that other dimension where it's more peaceful. It's, it's, it's really up to us when we go and how we go. It's not just one communal whole ascension or, you know, some will go in twos, some will go in threes, some will go in one, just you. It mm -hmm. really depends. It's, um, okay, go ahead. It really, it's, like I said, it's not one-stop shop that we collectively, all of us go at once. It's... <sighs> As some people told me, you know, I do not give you permission to shift me into ascension. I do not give you permission to disclose the secret space programs or whatever. Each person is an individual with their own, own wants and needs. So, you know, it really is dependent on you and what you're ready for. Mm -hmm. Some people would stay here because of the loved ones, like children, pets, and... Um, <laughs> And a big question is, are you taking them with you? Well, you have to ask them, do they want to go with you? Mm -hmm. Again, it comes to soul 
free will and soul aspect does the other person want to go with you you can't just say oh i'm just taking you with me just because i'm going you have to go with me too it's soul permissions and if the other person doesn't want to go you can't make them it's about asking them well this is how i saw it in tara this is how i felt it would you like to experience that as well would you like to go with me the thing is you might not be able to come back to this third fourth density anymore All right and you have to they have to make their own decision you can describe it as best as you can the experience you've had but you can't make them go it's it's free will of the soul if they want to go with you they will but you have to ask them their permission all right it's soul level aspect everybody's different we're not all the same i would love for everybody to just consciously awaken and know the truth of everything that is was or ever will be but i know people are not not all people want that or experience that in the same way i do so i can't make them so what is required for ascended <laughs> checklist checklist a good yeah. vibration of understanding what is the soul what is good what is what is bad where you are on your vibrational level where you are you know what you're ready for the biggest one is what you're ready for to experience are you ready to play energetically to be able to instantly manifest something see other worlds around you meet different beings because on tara you do have et contact openly uh -huh. are you ready to give up materialism you know there's on tara there's no such thing as earning money there's no money on tara mm -hmm. it is all vibrational energetic it's utopian-esque like it's not true true utopia tara some things are not perfect on tara and you know people still argue that's free will you can argue um but they do it peacefully but there's no materialism factor on tara you almost have to have an understanding of what dimensions are like what it is like to experience other dimensions and cultures and not think of greed not think of money not think of battle and violence you almost have to give all of that up and just be pure energy to experience everything that can be so people have attachments here so you mm -hmm. have to give, give up the attachments right you have to be ready to consider give, giving them up the attachments so there is a need for commitment you have to be committed to go it's only one I way process right um some can come back and have glimpses uh, other others wouldn't be able to come back it really depends on your vibrational energy and the ability you have to phase in and out of different dimensions and realities mm -hmm. so some attachments are positive and some attachments are negative like there is like hate for something yes i really hate that i really hate that and you're so attached to that hate you yes. would be sorry to leave it right yeah yeah i mean it you really have to think about what you're ready to let go of and what you just can't let can't give up right now yeah okay, it's like needs and wants and understanding of what the universe is really i'd say it's much easier to go to tara for the ones that are awakened almost fully or even mm -hmm. just starting to it's easier for them to shift there for the ones that are not awakened yet they're still in this plane of existence working it out here they might not uh, even have an inkling of tara yet how do you tell if you're awakened well by the subject matter that you talk about by the things you practice in your life you know that's that's how i see who's awakened or who isn't that's just my personal experience and the open-mindedness of people if i start talking about ets and contact or healing modalities if a person says oh well that's interesting i want to know more that tells me they're either awakened or, or on their way to being awakened what the person would like to hear more about mm -hmm. um 
how do you tell apart people who are really awakened from people who learn it by books but are still still thinking in words basically without spiritual growth how much they can understand mm -hmm. is basically the level of their understanding the really awoken person they just they understand things without you having to explain it to them you just say something and oh yes yes yeah i they just know on an energetic vibrational level how that is you don't have to explain factoids to them how mm -hmm. something works how something is they've already probably had those experiences and they could just tap in and say oh yeah yeah that's how it is without you having to explain it step by step i just compare myself to jim jim is so enlightened so childish and i i can explain everything but i'm still so so much down here he can feel it and i i barely can feel it right so so there is learning by books i know a lot of light workers some light workers who are who know everything but it's still words for them right mm -hmm. they talk about law of attraction and they still are they have a huge weight which drags them down weight of unhappiness i guess of mm -hmm. habitual habitual depression they know all the words but then they drag them down with words and then they they kind of drag them to the very low vibration like sickness i guess yeah and it's not just words it's it's what you're experiencing in the physicality life can drag you down literally mm -hmm. what you're mm -hmm. physically experiencing like at your work with your friends it's not about just words it's what you physically experience that you pull into your auric field uh -huh, uh -huh. how you process how how do you work through it how do you work it out so it doesn't you you don't have to experiencing have to experience the same old thing over and over again vibrationally how do you how do you learn your lesson without the hardship of that lesson always uh -huh. that's, that's how i see it for me it's like because i feel everything vibrationally on such a big scale it's like well what am i getting from this what is this how do I understand it beyond just the third, fourth density? Like what's there in the highest, highest sense of what I'm experiencing? That's how I go through things right now in life, literally. Let's uh, expand it in, in the direction of nature of reality and reincarnation. How real is reincarnation? It's as real as you want it to be. Mm -hmm. It's as, it's, it's literally what you want to experience. I wanted to, like, the, one of the reasons why I came here, I literally wanted to walk among the humans and understand what emotion is, like, really understand emotion. Um, the other part was I had a soulmate who wanted to come here, like, two million years ago during the time of Atlantis. And Atlantis spanned over a few million years. Okay not just 26,000 years or 70,000 years or 100,000 years. Mm -hmm. It was literally a few million. Mm -hmm. she, she came at a time when they were playing around with the genetic technology, you know, altering mm -hmm. themselves on the genetic level to try to ascend that way. She felt they should try it organically, so she came to try and teach them. And instead, she wasn't trapped by the mm -hmm. gray aliens. She was oh, trapped wow. under... Peru under the Amaramuru gateway portal. And I came back here. To me, this is like being backwards in time in the past. So I came to help rescue her. Okay. And the, the feeling I had, I can only do it through a physical incarnation of body. Not coming here as an ET, but coming here as a human being to help her. And I helped her. I helped. I con I, I made contact with the Pleiadians and Dromedans, and they con came and got her. Wow, that's yeah. simple. It's not simple. She mm -hmm. gets to leave the planet while I get to stay here, and okay, you okay. know, and work through my physical body stuff. It's not very simple, but that's how I chose it to be. So I'm here. Uh, can you give her name? Yes, Akira. Akira. Yes. So she was trapped by the grace for a million, a million years? Two, two million years, yes. Two million years. 
So basically, she was in stasis somehow. Yes. Trapped yes. as a soul, not to being able to experience stuff. Yeah, she could feel what was going on and see it, but she was in stasis. Her mind could go out and feel things and see mm -hmm. things. And she actually contacted me telepathically after I had my, I had um, surgery. Mm -hmm. And when I came out of the hospital in 2014, close to the end of 2014, I started having these vivid contact experiences with her. Mm -hmm. That's how contact started for me, literally, with ah. the Andromedans and Pleiadians. Because mm -hmm. she's, she's Andromedan Pleiadian. Mm -hmm. And I have some of that in my soul aspect as well. Um, and I argued with her. Like, I remember I argued with her. I didn't want to come to this planet ever again and to experience how things are here. But she did. She went on her own. And I'm like, I'm not going. But then she went missing. And I'm like, oh, no. Where she went. I, it's like I couldn't find her. And she's like, oh, no, she went there. She's there. Now I have to go back in time and help her. I had resentment coming here to this plan, coming back here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I did not want to come back here, but I came because mainly because of her and because mm -hmm. I wanted to feel again what it would be like to be human. All right. You touched an interesting question, which I heard from the very beginning. What, what is your species, if you can share it, and what's your favorite species, right, or alien race? Well, going back to that last lifetime with Akira, Andromedan Palladian. That was my species. Before, where, where I was originally born, it's on a planet called Kanatra, where it's very hot, and they use magic. They use mm -hmm. a lot of esoterics and magic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're aware of other ET species. They have um, spaceships, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it's very hot. Like, I had wings, fiery wings. I, mm -hmm. I had a humanoid appearance with fiery wings, like yellow wings. Okay. That's where I originally was born. My soul spark, the wholeness of who I am, that whole soul spark with all parts of the soul in one. Okay. I was born on Kanatra in another universe. Literally oh. in another universe. Not even universe. the galaxy, even even the universe, right? In other, in so another you, universe. So you're uh, a walk in <laughs> into this universe. So you're a guest here. I am a guest here. I don't call myself a walk-in because I've lived here on, like, I've had 200 lifetimes on Earth before. Ah. So I wouldn't say I'm a walk-in, but I okay. am I am back for a visit. Yes. All I'm right. a visitor. Uh, so can you describe this uh, Andromedan Pleiadian species? What What is it? What is your, how different you are from us? Well, in in my this is my physical body my human right. body right. but i call myself an andromedan palladian hybrid mm -hmm. my my body is 16 feet tall mm -hmm. my skin is light blue with blonde hair that has different uh streaks of colors red blue all kinds of different streaks and i would say i have these electric blue eyes that energetically it's like saying almost the eyes of a thousand suns the energy factor that's what i mm -hmm. really look like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that's the the that's the andromedan palladian body that um was in the last star travel of lifetime with akira uh-huh uh -huh. and i was actually on a planet bluish blue bluish purple planet called andromeda in the andromeda galaxy somewhere that's okay. where I met Akira and, you know, a lot of water, a lot of oceans there. So it's, it's really bits and pieces of remembering my souls, my different pieces of my soul and where I've been and gone, what I've, who I've interacted with and who I was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the memory that's back. I have that back. Because I could never understand why I came back to Earth. Like, why am I here? before the awakening process. I could not understand. Now I understand. And I've almost made peace with it while okay. I'm here. So, yeah, we have to. Yeah, Everyone, you know. Yeah. Why are we here? What do we do here? Yeah. What's, what's the nature of reality? And 
is reality different, really? Yeah, what's the nature of reality? That's, you know, we can discuss it for many webinars, but um, how real is the reality? How flexible, how fluid is the past? Can you shift, can you change the past? Um, I, I, I would say if the past was really horrible, something happened that shouldn't have happened, you can change it to shift it to a positive timeline. Right. Otherwise, you don't go tampering with the past. If nothing bad happens, you don't go changing that. You don't need to. But basically what I discovered, I guess I was talking about that forever, but you just discover something in your past which you wasn't aware of before, and you always wonder, was it there before you created the new past? Like the past lives, uh, I think they can be assigned to you because of your achievements now, like you, you'll race to a new level mm -hmm. and you get a past life plugged in into your soul because it can handle it. Yes, that's true. If you're not afraid to see what your past life was and you can handle it in this body, then you're ready to see it. Sometimes you're even plugged in into that lifetime when you're not ready for it and you have some physical manifestation of that lifetime. Like for me, the Atlantis lifetime, I was the mermaid and I hit my head and broke my back. Now I have some symptoms of that in this life mm -hmm. and I constantly have to heal myself to work through it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to not be bothered by those symptoms of the headaches or whatever. Um, I And it's also understanding why that lifetime happened to you why you remember it now for me it's like i needed the knowledge to to literally live in this place right now that i'm in and the nature of my reality changes every second every second that i'm here it changes it's not the same anymore so and it's it's about how much my physical body biological body can process all of the stuff that's going on on the energetic level because sometimes, energetically, I surpass the capabilities of this physical body. And then I have to retune and rebalance that. Oh, yeah. It happens, like, daily. You you, you damage your physical by doing too much in energy. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then you have to do it yourself or rely on uh, helpers to fix you. Like Jim. Exactly. And, yeah. and that's the nature of being the physical reality. And that it's different from the higher realities where you could just energetically do as much as if you have a physical body, it doesn't feel that because it's aligned energetically. Doubts. Um, I have doubts and some, some weeks are like, they're pretty bad, pretty big. And I have to like force myself to, to do something about them because mm -hmm. I had, I had to, proofs and confirmations, but very few, very sparse. You know, if I have to like explain to others, I like have two real uh, non-questionable confirmations, like in, in the whole story of all that I remember. Everything else was wonderful, but it was personal and it could be always misinterpreted as a coincidence. Yeah. Do you have yeah. doubts and um, do you have wonderful confirmations to share with others? So kind of enforce. So in this physical life, do you have much to like to remember and say, you know, that was a beautiful confirmation. Like I saw a real saucer and uh, there was certainly not in a dream or something like that. Well, yeah, that's, that's interesting about seeing the saucers and the ships. I never doubted that I go on these ships and I see these things and I visit these different benevolent ETs and sometimes not so benevolent because I've had that. Um, I never wanted to physically photograph those ships. Never mm -hmm. thought about doing any of that stuff. Like, I just know what the ships look like. I've been there. I've seen that. That's that. You know, that is physically that. I don't need proof of photos. But then recently people are talking about all of their et experiences and having photos and stuff and one night in november of 2016 i just went started going for walks at night in the forest because i live near a forest mm -hmm. 
And my higher self said, Elena, today you should take a camera with you. There's a surprise waiting for you. I'm like, okay, whatever. Grabbed my camera, went outside. And I was, it was my higher self suggested, you need to look up in the sky more to see what's up there. Mm -hmm. Physically, what's up in that sky, in this sky, in your, this physical three, four, third, fourth reality that you're in, like physically every day. So I said, okay. I looked up to up in the sky and I saw this triangular craft flashing in and out and other craft beside it flashing in and out. And it's always been triangles in November. Um, and I took some photos of it. It was really hard to take photos of it because it goes in and out of focus. But I said, okay, hold still for a sec. I need a picture of you. Mm -hmm. So it held still and I took a picture. And it looked like maybe Pleiadian craft, triangular craft, because they use that. The the Yael mm. used triangular mm. craft. Mm -hmm. so I took a few pictures, and one time I went outside, and I tried taking more pictures of the craft, and there was this one craft that was circular with red lights flashing all over it. And I'm like, oh, something different, different craft. And I'm like, I'm going to take a picture of that. And you know what it said to me? I don't want you taking a picture of right, this craft right, right. with the triangles in. The triangles want to be photographed. I don't. And I'm like, I'm seeing you. So I snapped the picture because it was in front of my eyes. It was just black night sky. Yep. It blo yeah, blocked me. I respect from their. A picture. I usually wouldn't even try to pull out the camera. I respect their privacy. Unless they want to be photographed, I wouldn't even try. Yeah. yeah, the triangles wanted to be photographed. This other circular craft with their red blinking lights, it said to me, you're not photographing us. We don't want to be in your triangle pictures. And I'm like, you're there. I'm going to take a picture. You know that, <laughs> that yeah, while well, you're here, might as well. Snap, black sky. They literally blocked me energetically from taking a picture of their red craft with the blinking lights. The circular yeah, they can move easily, yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you have any other physical confirmations which you, like you experience as a physical body uh negative attacks when i disclose you know, are you aware of the secret space programs i heard about yeah i heard you speaking about that uh so were they uh just humans or they were like more than humans in they were more body? than they were more than humans they were hybrids like assassin uh -huh. hybrids one oh, was gosh. reptilian type fourth density reptilian humanoid type that could shapeshift between human, mm -hmm. between looking like a human vampire and a reptilian, like marine reptilian. And the other one was like a cobra assassin. He looked beautiful, like a Pleiadian blonde, mm -hmm. you know, Pleiadian blondes. But he, when he shapeshifts, he has cobra features, like a, a snake, like a cobra. And when, when he zaps you, you literally feel like you're paralyzed. Okay. He zapped me and he zapped my cat. Oh, she gosh. was like twitching and I was twitching at the same time. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, you know, I don't want you telling more truth about these secret space programs that you were in. Okay. I don't want you describing this. Otherwise we're going to come physically and we're going to damage you. Oh, so it was a warning. Yes. Yes. Same as when the assassin came, the, the female one, the, a human reptilian one. She's like, she paralyzed me. This was at night. I was half awake. She paralyzed me and she tried to energetically kill me and make it look like a natural death. Mm -hmm. And I had this argument with her. I said, look, you can kill me, make it look like it was natural death, but my soul can come back and I can, you know, continue on with my business if I want. And I said, tell them, tell your higher ups, you can't kill me. You can't interfere with me. Mm -hmm. Can't interfere with what I'm doing. You can harm me on the physical level, but I'm still here and I'll still be here. You can't kill me that way. No thanks. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. she went away. Wonderful. Nice strength and nice understanding. Um, we have about, say, half an hour left, more or less. Um, is there any topic you wanted to bring? Uh, I have several more questions, which I think are important, but if if you have any topic you wanted to bring on by yourself, we can go to that. Something no. new that you didn't put on, on the web yet, I guess. Um, 
I'm just good with following whatever you have. Wonderful. Um, I wanted some characteristics of uh, good and bad species, uh, good and bad in terms of, you know, who can we trust as friends and who should we be aware, uh, aware or wary of. Um, let's start with Zetas. Uh, obviously, there are in each species, in each uh, association, there is positive and negatives. So what's your feeling about the Zeta grays? Well, some of the Zeta grays are enlightened. They don't want to mess with us. They don't want to tinker with our DNA. They don't want mm -hmm. to transplant us to another universe. The other Zetas, the ones that are still struggling, they're the ones that are going to try to trick you in mm -hmm. your mind. And you might feel pain when they visit you. So it's really sensing the intention of your visitor, whoever visits you, if you get visitation. Like, what do they physically or holographically put you through the experience? Was it a positive experience? Was it a negative experience? How far did it go? What was the intent behind the experience, especially with the Zetas? The enlightened ones will try to teach you and give you help. The unenlightened Zetas will try to have experiments on you to see what's how far they could push you. What's their um, negative agenda? What, what What's their approach? How do they harm the humans? Well, what, what, they, why do they visit us at all? What's, what's their big plan? It goes back to they ruined their own dimensions. Right. They experimented with vortexes and time and space mm -hmm. where they spliced their soul aspects with those time aspects and their genetic structure just started degrading they started devolving instead of evolving naturally uh -huh. they played around too much with their genetics and with time and vortexes and layers of time and space mm -hmm. their dimension was closed and it collapsed so they came into our dimension and other parallel dimensions of earth they started playing around with us as a species genetically to try to create hybrids to fix what they did to their own species, mm -hmm. to try to save themselves through hybridization, mm -hmm. through even transplanting us to other realities. Mm -hmm. You're still you, but you've been cloned sort of, and in your parallel reality, there's another you. Mm -hmm. And you're struggling to balance both identities. And that's um, on a multidimensional level. They're literally mm -hmm. playing around with our physicality and energy mm -hmm. to try to see if they can extract something from us to help themselves to, to regain their species, to regain their bodies, emotions. You know, they couldn't reproduce anymore, the right. Zetas, some of them. Uh, that's the negative ones or the unenlightened. And the enlightened ones... They've realized already, they've seen their future aspects and realized how they could fix the issues and fixed it. Ah. So how do they look? How can you tell them apart from others? What's the difference between the oh. Zetas and others? The Zetas, they're um, different types of greys. Mm -hmm. Different types. Some of them are short, some of them are tall. It's not one specific Zeta species. There's many species. And mm -hmm. they've created hybrids that look humanized. You can mm -hmm. tell their eyes are kind of, you know, ex exotic. The hair is interesting. The forehead is bigger. That's how you can tell the hybrids. But and the degree of emotions that they have. Some some of the Zeta have more emotions. Some have less. And are not so sympathetic to what they're doing with you during an abduction experience. They are not. Some of them are very sympathetic. Mm -hmm. The enlightened ones. And they're the ones that teach you uh -huh. to, to help you evolve. The other ones, not so much. They're not sympathetic at all to what they're doing to you. Mm -hmm. And the shorter ones are um, biological robots? Some of them are. Some of them are not. That's okay. the thing. That's the tricky part of telling them apart. Um, if you don't see them, uh, can, can you tell them by feeling? Uh, how do they feel? when they visit you in a meditation, what's the difference between Zetas and others? There's a lot of different species. Mm -hmm. um, and not, not all Zetas feel the same vibrationally. Okay. They all have their unique energetic signature. 
vibrational signature. All right. We all do as a, a different species. It's really intent. Like, you know, and how you can feel negativity from others, the flow of mm -hmm. energy. Mm -hmm. You just feel that with other species as well. You can feel the energy of the species, of that particular individual who's coming in your meditation who comes up, right? Mm -hmm. it, it, you really have to feel out the energies, what the intent is behind them coming to visit you during meditation or physically, whatever. Um, appearance. And these, these guys, Zetas, are very, they have experience with shape-shifting and holographic technology. Mm -hmm. So they can present to you anyone or anything they want mm -hmm. in your mind or physically. Mm -hmm. They're really good at mind manipulation mm -hmm. to making you think something that's not really that thing. So they're uh, specialists in that category. All right. Um, there is a sound which I, some days I feel like the whole day, sometimes it comes in meditation. It's like very high pitch, like even higher than that, but but basically in the noise. Mm -hmm. And I was told it's a signature of Zeta. Do you have any comment on that? Uh, it could be any signature. It could be a Zeta right. signature. It could be anything. Uh, um, do you have a lot of electronic equipment where you are? Of course we do. Um, it's usually Wi-Fi from places like from neighbors and my mm -hmm. own Wi-Fi. And, um, and well, uh, it's it's a very dense area here in San Diego. Yeah. It's um, we have military bases around, so it could be anything. Well, you know, this AI technology and your Wi-Fi and everything that's electronic, and it puts out that type of sound. I hear like, I hear that sometimes, and I just tune it out. I say, you, yeah. I tune it out. You do not have the right to influence me through those sounds. I can recognize that sound now. I'm like, block energetic block you can't influence me through that stuff anymore so it depends i go the to signal. the ocean now i have that luxury of being near the ocean so there it kind of takes away a lot of electromagnetics because it's the water is conductive so it's it's a yeah. great way to to get in the pure living uh, electromagnetics which is very different yes so um is it true that Zetas are gone now, largely, that they've been uh, kind of repelled from the solar system by our friends? Yeah, they're mostly gone. Some of them are still skulking around. Mm -hmm. Their agenda basically is null and it's been nullified. They've created the hybrids. They've saved their species mostly mm -hmm. by creating the hybrids and having them in parallel universes and Earth systems. That mm -hmm. these hybrids can survive in so their mm -hmm. agenda has been met without having to conquer us and Excellent. take over our planet so there some of there's still rogue factions of them lurking around but you know humans have these secret space programs that can repel them so in space so i just played with this rubber bands and i got a wonderful interesting symbol just by chance mm -hmm. Look at that. it's it's kind of uh continuous line and it changes color see <laughs> that's like your dna really ah could be yeah um so the uh, how do is it a tricky question which i don't know the true answer um are you yell descendants of zetas or are they unrelated um I think the Zetas may have given some genetic material mm -hmm. for creating the Yael. That's a huge possibility. I don't know the answer to that either. All I can do is speculate. And I think the Zetas created many, many hybrids, hybridized species. And I, I'm sure you might have provided a little bit of genetics to the Yael as well. So can you tell your yellow part by just looking? How different are they from Zetas? Well, they almost look human. Yeah, yeah, look very human. Mm -hmm. Because they're close to us. They're our ancestral relation. Uh, you can tell yeah, yellow part by they have bigger heads. Some of them have slanted eyes, you know, that exotic mm -hmm. Asian mm -hmm. look. 
the skin is a little bit more yellow or grayish white. There's different hybrids of yayels as well. They don't always look the same. Or there are there's the yayel that look like beautiful humans, like supermodels. So a great question. Um, <laughs> do yayel look um, sexually attractive to humans? Yes, very much so. Uh -huh. Especially the, the taller ones that are more, you know, some of them look like Pleiadians. Wow. Um, and they go naked in their world? I wouldn't say that. No? The, the Yael that I met wasn't naked. Okay. It depends on the circumstance, I guess, of the situation that they're in. Okay. I don't think they go all naked. All right, that was just, I guess, um, maybe they appear naked to each other and then for foreigners they, they dress up. No, no. No? no? I, I think most species, the ones that have general parts, still dress up, still put on something. Okay. Not necessarily the reptilians. <laughs> now those go around naked. Ah, I the, don't know. The whites. Okay, talking about reptilians, um, what's their involvement currently? Are they also gone, or are they be are they here? And what's their are they positive, negative? What are the kinds of reptilians? Around? There's all kinds. There's all kinds. The white Draco are the ones that are working with the the secret government syndicates on the planet. The huge okay. ones, like fourteen, seven feet tall ones, that like to control your mind and tell you what to do. They're okay. like grayish white. They're the Draco. All right. The more aggressive ones that use AI in conjunction with their body. They're not the nicest ones. There's also hybrids mm -hmm. that are part insectoid, part reptilian. There's the green reptilians. Not all of them are bad and not all of them are good. And some of it's in between. Mm -hmm. They straddle the fence between good and bad, depending on the day you catch them in. Just like yeah, we, we have several do. Drakers who want to channel to us and speak to us in channelings and uh, just comment on that. What What is uh, their good agenda? What's their bad agenda? How do we go with them? The, the, bad, the bad agenda is control the human population so we don't wake up and evolve into our highest potential. That's the bad agenda. Mm -hmm. Keep the greed factor. Keep those humans confused, especially in government, so they don't see the higher road that they can take. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. the agenda. Keep them unenlightened, unawakened. That's the Draco agenda. Other reptilians um, are great healers. And the green ones, some of the green ones, they're great healers. All they want to do is heal people, help people to evolve and heal and learn. So you can't just label all reptilians as just one race, one being. There's many different species of reptilians, many, even more than Zeta. Right. So, um, so the reptilians, some of them, they say they are from Earth, from just from another version of Earth, I guess. Yes. Do you know those? Yes. They're the green ones, the, the ones that mm -hmm. look like the dragons. Mm -hmm. That's the Earth. Even this Earth had reptilians. Who do you think made those dinosaurs? They're reptilians. Uh huh. And they spied on the dinosaurs. Spied on us as human species. They weren't stupid. Dinosaurs were not stupid. They had a lot of sentience. Uh, so you're saying, I had an impression that dinosaurs came before the humans. They did. Yeah. No, actually, they coexisted. They came before the humans, but for a while, they coexisted together. Right, right, right. That's my understanding, too. Was it in higher dimension or, or not? It was very much on this physical dimension. Very much on the physical, like the raw physical dynamics. Um, here is a big question, which kind of is so confused. Uh, so there is a story of Lemurians, Atlanteans, and downfall of Atlantis and then 3D. So what was the, no, what was the dimension of Atlantis is more or less clear, but how do the uh, hybridization program and hybridization by the aliens 
match the history line with Lemuria and Atlantis? That's well, the, the thing is, um, Atlantis and Lemuria, it was part human and it was part mm -hmm. ET. Mm -hmm. And they coexisted together, really. Um, so it's a mixture of both together. So Not let me separate. clarify the question. So the story about Anunnaki and Enki, at which point do they come? Are they coming to Lemuria, Atlantis, or later? I think they're Sumerian in the Sumerian timeline. So I after the fall later. of Atlantis? Yes, after yes, the after the fall and the forgetting aspect, because they fell. Some of them formed their own societies and remembered. Others forgot because they mm -hmm. lost their technology and they forgot and, you know, they regressed back to simplicity. Mm -hmm. and the Anunnaki came in and, and Anunnaki is not one species. It's many okay. species. Anunnaki is so, just a word. So which species would that be? A bunch of different humanoids, humanoid looking species came together. Um, and it is linked to a planet called Nibiru, which uh -huh. is a real planet. And it's not in this space of reality. It's in a different okay. galaxy. But they came okay. from that planet and they did need gold. So they they did work in genetically splicing. I would say they were one of the um, genetic harvester races, you know, that played around with the genetic project of the mm -hmm. human species tinkering around with DNA. That right. were some of them were Anunnaki, but they weren't just one human species, they were different species of humanoid uh, beings. Were they reptilians or some of them reptilians? I would say they had reptilian energies, but they were mostly human, they didn't have the appearance of reptilian. Oh, I just remember a big question which I missed. Um, uh, so the how do the draconians look like? Draconians? Yeah. Like I said, there's the Draco. One of the main components is the Draco. Um, and there are the white ones, the whites. There's also black draconians that are like black, literally. All right. That's the Draco Armada. I call but them the draws. What's their biology? Are they looking like crocodiles, stand up crocodiles, standing up crocodiles, or what? Tyrannosaurus? Well, I would. Uh, I would say a bit of dinosaur, a bit of croc, crocodile. Um, it's even amphibianoid, a bit of amphibian in there. So I think I think it's it's a combination of a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Very tall. Like I've seen black reptilians, I've seen green ones, I've seen dragon-looking ones that are a hundred feet tall. Mm -hmm. I've seen the white Draco, so it's it's. Let's focus on mixes. the one you can on the on the big Draco, which you can describe. So they have hands and wings at the same. Yes, no, uh, they didn't have wings. These ones didn't have wings. They were black in shape, fourteen mm -hmm. to fifteen feet tall. Um, sort of looked like a lizard, with reptilian features to me, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they're the ones that like to experiment on human populations and they have these armadas i didn't call them to me they weren't the they weren't called the draco they were called the drazo drazo that's one faction of the draco reptilians mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they all have different names despite everybody lumping them as just draco so on many pictures they have wings and they fly around so which ones would, would be that uh they're the uh, they're the dominant species that have retained the wings there's the recessive species that, you know, it was either uh, programmed out of them or natural evolution just took it out of them, the, the tail and the wings. They're the recessive reptilians. When you say recessive, what does it mean? It means so, that they don't have the general characteristics of the wings and the large tail anymore. Oh, so the tail is small? It's either small like this or it's totally gone. But they still don't look like humans at all. They just still st standing up, yeah. reptilian, right? So it's more like the yeah, shape of the yeah. crocodile, which is standing up, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and the, the reptile big, and the crocodile. And the big brain, right? Yeah, they have big brains. Um, they're very good geneticists, genetic splicing. Mm -hmm. They have made reptilian-human hybrids. 
All right. So it, the, the being looks human, but has the capability of partially shape-shifting to sort of have a fuzzy reptilian image. Uh huh. So those hybrids are here on Earth. They've been here for a long time. Yeah, we have some of the hybrids in our community, and um, they are kind of just take it as, as is. You know, mm -hmm. some people have hybrid uh, DNA. They still, they're still a light worker. They yeah. just have that that feature. Yes. And some mm -hmm. of them are like predominantly still aligned with the reptilian factions, like they're human reptilian hybrid, and right. they know about the reptilian agenda. Some of the incarnated, you know, incarnated reptilian energies, light workers. Okay. They're not connected to the reptilian agenda, but mm -hmm. there are those reptilian humanoid hybrids that that are connected to the agenda, you know, closely. They they work with the agenda, so to speak. Right. Yeah. So conscious. Yeah. Yeah. Caution yes. is the word. No, no. I meant conscious, consciously working for reptilians, or consciously being free, I guess, and choosing their path. Yeah. Some consciously working with them, some consciously aware of them, but not working on the agenda directly. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And caution, like, I'm very cautious when I meet ET species uh -huh. because I am more aware of the mind control factor now than I was when I first started having contact experiences. Um, and being more aware of what's negative and positive, what's coming to visit me. So when you meet with them, when you visit their ships, you appear as uh, this tall, blonde, Andromedan Pleiadian? Sometimes I appear as the tall uh, Andromedan Pleiadian. Sometimes I just appear as a tall blonde with, you know, with white skin. Uh-huh. And um, what would be your name then? Um, most, I just call myself Eliana. Eliana. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is Eliana, do you connect it to L, like God L, like uh, Raphael, uh, Angel? No. no. I connect it to the L race because there is L the race. L, L race, E L. Not uh -huh. L's, but L. Yes. It's, it's not Raphael. It's, I'd say they're one of the original creator guardians that created this universe that we live in. Uh -huh. And they're time travelers. They're, Tell me more about L. We, we, we had a nice contact with L. Well, um, for me, it's when I go on their ship, it's a biological living ship. Okay. So it's long. It has about uh, 22, 24 levels. And mm -hmm. it's a mixture. There's some Pleiadians there. There's some Yael, some Andromedans, and some... They're, the not, they're not the original L. They're the descendants of the, um, they're not as big as the original elves were because they were from anywhere from 24 feet to 70 and up. These guys are, they go up to 70 feet. So they're, some of them are shorter than 70 feet, like 24 feet, 10 feet. They, they mostly have human features, human oh. features of the predominant human body. Um, but they do have the technology for healing. They have the technology. I'd say they're on par with the Girkfit Near Alliance. I saw one ship, not a not a not too much, not too many of their ships, because they traveled from the future, from 13,000 years in the future back here mm -hmm. to because they sent their people out. They sent their people here to to Earth, the current Earth with the ascension process and they call them the light keys. Which so keys? they light, light keys. Ah. And some of the light keys have been taken back on the L ship because they've been ready, they've done their thing here, whatever they were here to do, they've done it. They've stabilized the frequency energies, you know, alignments, grid work, they're ready to go back to the ship and some of them have gone back on so the ship. When they were here were they here as humans or were they tr just dimensionally kind of in a different reality? They were here as incarnated humans okay. of the L energy. Oh, wow. The soul group of the Ls. Ah, here we go. All right, yes. now, now things come together. So we have yes. some people who are associated with the soul group of the L. 
Yes. Yes. Wow. And um, they told me there were, from their ship, there was about eight of them. So eight how are you connected to them? Are you also connected to them spiritually somehow? Yes, I know two of them. I know two of the individuals. But you're not of them. I am of them, yes. My heritage oh. is L. Say again? My, my heritage, my soul, one of my soul aspects is L. Oh, wow. Yes. There you go. Yeah. And I'm aware of the other two that I know personally who are L of the L energy. Uh huh. There are totally eight of us from the L ship, mm -hmm. the Akashin. And their ship is called the Akashin. It's a physical, biological living ship with 2,000 plus crew okay. aboard the ship. Mm -hmm. um, recently, they told me they've pulled away from from our space. They've they've gone to their Arcturus. Okay. Yeah. So they've moved away. Some of them, the elves, that energetic soul group connection, they were transported back on the ships. Okay. And they moved away from the planet. Okay. They're just kind of letting us do our own thing and evolve. They've said they've. They've watched us for close to 13,000 years. They've been here, and now it's time. They pulled away. They've collected their people and pulled away a little. Okay. I, I just have to wrap up a lot of questions because I, I just want to finish maybe in short time. So tons of questions come up with that, but I, I would let them slide for next, maybe next, yeah. next time. Um, Alliances. Um, so the friendly alliances, Gurk Fitnir, Star Command, Galactic Federation, uh, the Council of Nari, Arcturian Council, uh, Andromedan Council. Can you kind of talk a little bit about any of those? Sure. Um, the Andromedan Alliance, the Andromedan Council, as they call themselves, they're more about protecting um, Earth from invasion, from forces. They, they, they teach you about evolution and stuff. Um, but I found that the Gurkfit Nier Alliance, very much about healing, not mm -hmm. so much about defensive force protection of the earth. They're more about the healing aspects. Mm -hmm. They take you on and heal you and deprogram you of all this stuff that's bad. You know, if you were an unfortunate species to deal with the reptilians and you have AI and negative programming, uh -huh. The Gurk Fit Near Alliance will take you on and help you to debug you, basically. Nice. Yeah, the Andromeda Council is about teaching you evolution and about defending the planets mm -hmm. the, in this galaxy and Andromeda Galaxy. So those are the two differences between Gurk Fit Near and Andromeda Council. Those are the two that I know of, predominantly, that I've had dealings with. Others is just having being beamed up and having contact experience okay you're this species this is your history hi how are you rank file and serial number so to speak you know information about the different species so who is so, the biggest uh, who has the biggest presence in solar system which of the alliances of the i would positive. say kirk fit kirk fit near and andromeda council how about ashtar command Ashtar Command is very interesting. There's there's uh, positive groups of Ashtar Command and there's negative ones. It depends on who who you meet with Ashtar Command. But you worked with them, right? You were yes, a I messenger. Did. Yes, uh, I worked with them. I worked with Ashtar directly and they repelled the reptilian fleet that from two... From 2000 until 2010, they were here repelling the reptilian fleet. And we are grateful for that. So yes. how does Ashtar look like? Is it a physical being in some yeah. dimension? Yeah, tall, blonde, looks Pleiadian, mm -hmm. wears blue uniform and a triangular insignia. And he has a female counterpart. I think that's his energetic soulmate named Athena. Mm-hmm. Are they on the same um, ship or different ships? Yeah, same ship, yeah. They have a primary command ship. Mm -hmm. But what they're not is... here right now. They're not here anymore. They okay. pulled out. Oh, so they pulled out. Okay. 
after 2010, 11, they pulled out. Oh, they repelled the reptilian fleet and they pulled out. Uh, the Ashtar command website uh, is, I guess, the biggest light worker website. It has many thousands of members, like more than, I think more, more than 20,000 members. Yes. Ashtar, Ashtar command uh, on named NING. Uh, yeah. Well, the Galactic Federation. Yeah. Well, I'd say the Galactic Federation is made up a bunch of different species, Pleiadian, Andromedan, Lyran, um, Vega, a bunch of different species. It's not just one species that make up the Galactic Federation. I, we, we never discussed Vega. What about Vega? It's a big star in the sky, so they're close. Yeah, they're close, and they have a few different species in Vega. Not as much variety as Andromeda mm -hmm. in Milky Way galaxy, but uh, small variety. Mm -hmm. Humanoid type looking, some more ET features, like different skin color, ears, you know, height. Mm -hmm. You can tell the difference by that. So not, the they're, not, they're not big in solar system, right? Not, no, not very big, no. Um, I'm very puzzled about Arcturians. Apparently, there are different types of Arcturians. Yes. And some of them yes. are... Okay, tell me about that. Some of them are purple. Some of them are green. Some of them are blue. They also have humanoid hybrids. They've hybridized some of their uh, species. So very, very telepathic, very um, advanced, like in space, space flight and travel in um, time travel as well. Mm-hmm. Very spiritual, very much into teaching you spirituality and evolution from what I've had contact with them. So they are the leaders of Gurkhvitnir, right? The the mind of Gurkhvitnir, is it right? That specifically, I don't know. I know they're one of the groups of Gurkhvitnir, okay. mm -hmm. but I don't know if they're the leaders or not. I didn't meet the um, Arcturian part of the Gurkhvitnir. I met other Arcturians. I think Gurkhvitnir is governed by, volunt okay. voluntarily governed by Arcturian consul, I think. Well, I didn't meet that part of the consul. I met, um, I met Arcturians that are participating right now in different um, negotiations with the planet, with Earth mm -hmm. government, mm -hmm. for peaceful communication and contact. That's that's the ones that I met, and they were the uh, the blue ones, the tall blues, as I call them, with big heads. How tall are they? Up to fourteen feet. Oh wow! Very slender, tall they, and slender. Are they related to humans? Or do they look like Earth humans, or are they are or not? No, they look humanoid-like, but I wouldn't say like human human. Mm -hmm. Some of their hybrids are related to us. Is there any they way have... to tell them apart? How would you recognize them if you've never seen, seen them? Well, they, they basically have the, the big head and the colors, purple, blue, purple, blue, and green. Did you meet small orange Arcturians? No, I never met the orange ones. I met the blue, purple, and the green. Uh-huh. <sighs> So much out there. I I want yes. to be taken for a visit. Hey, I want to be taken. Hey guys, can you uh, next time you see them, can you ask for me? I yeah. I I want to be taken and remember stuff. <laughs> many of us. Many. Well, of us. Uh, I've uh, I've met so many different species. Right now, I'm in give me a break mode. I need a break from all the meetings and stuff. I just need to concentrate on this human body and healing and. You know, I still I still want to participate, but I've backed off off, off of the meetings and the stuff. Wonderful. I need a break. That's a great attitude. Great. Contemplation, relaxation. Yes. I, I need time for this human body to to integrate everything it's learned and seen and remembered. Because I'm still human, so right now it's a rest period. I'm sometimes I get, you know contact a little bit of contact but i'm like no 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 don't put me into big role of anything just give me a break mm -hmm. they're respecting it all of them are respecting it thank you for um giving us that wonderful webinar um i'm so 
happy that I think when I was looking for a photograph for the post uh, about that webinar, it was really hard to find a webinar where, where you, you would smile. You were in a, in a, your emotional range is very alien. You recognize it, right? Yes, yes. Minus two, minus two. I, it's when I'm when I'm angry, I'm I'm actually very, I don't know that word, laughable. I'm not really strong in anger. My emotional range is is narrow, mm -hmm. and uh, I I can be happy, a little bit happy, a little bit unhappy, but but very narrow compared to other people. Mm -hmm. And um, so I was I'm very glad that you were in a happy mood today. And, yes, uh, it's and, in a happy uh, it place. Was, it was nice to see you shifting into your light body. That was wonderful. Yeah. Uh, if you can do another webinar with us, that would be great. Maybe schedule it. You, no, no push, no pressure. Okay. Whenever it's convenient for you, but we would be absolutely happy to see to see you at um, a well, time convenient for you. Oh, well, thank you. I'm usually because I work during the week, Monday through Friday, so I basically just have Saturday and Sunday to to do interviews and webinars. Great. And um, just there is a I'm writing now one book, and mm -hmm. your material contributes a lot to this book. I'm writing it with, with my helpers and with Jim. Uh, we'll include the summaries of different species and different topics like reincarnation, ascension, mm -hmm. and species. And uh, so the summary, like Wikipedia type, yes. no discussion, no no argumentation, just for the light workers, for the believers. Yeah, the positive information. That's yeah. that's the principle of the book. Plus transcripts of um, maybe that interview also would part, yeah. part, partly be being, um, included. Yeah, so, sure. but I see the opportunity of you writing the book with your helpers. I don't know how much <laughs> do you like writing, but you have that unique outlook, unique uh, insight, which can be can be put in a book format because. Interviews are one thing, but somehow yeah. when you write it in a book, it between the lines it con it contains certain vibration which can be only yeah. only transferred in a written book format. I have to be honest; it's just me. I don't have any helpers, and I tried to start writing the book, but I don't have any time. That's yeah. It, not, I yeah. literally. That's why I did that website. Yeah, <laughs> time is non-existent. That... Time, time is. I like... know. I know. A rarity in this in this reality, yes. Yeah, but I'm always busy with something, learning something, going somewhere, experiencing something. So the Andromedans told me, we'll give you energy to put that website. We'll give you energy to do the interviews. So the website is like a book, like a huge book. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So people can go and explore, but an actual book, I don't have time. I don't right. like saying that. In this reality, I don't have time because right. I'm exploring everything and anything. So I'm, I'm using technology for that and basically what, and helpers. Uh, mm -hmm. What I came up with the idea that I, I just dictate things and then have it transcribed and then uh, I will get help from editors. So basically the, the key is to, to ask the right questions and to find the yes. right tone for the book. And then... Yes. Assembling it together can be done collectively. So, yeah. so I I just put it out there. If there is someone who loves you, may and and is a good editor and writer, like there are just professional editors and writers who can take the material and package. Yeah. So maybe yeah. somebody can do interviews like that. Maybe even mm -hmm. on public level. And then out of these interviews, of the past interviews and future interviews. By mm -hmm. clarifying the questions, finally packaging it into a book. Because yeah. there is something in the book which is condensed and and it just structures the reality in a different way. Yeah. Our videos structure reality in one way. The book is structured reality. Just yeah. the same push just from the other direction. I met yeah. people who like the, the the impulse for the book was I met a teenager light worker like a star seed who is completely open completely a believer but they just ask for information mm -hmm. ask what can they read and you can recognize when the person is not a listener but a reader by big eyes and small ears and that reader mind the analytical yes. mind over here so 
so basically for these people there needs to be a book so so just putting out there it is a possibility it is a yeah. something which i see possible to yeah. be created i at some point maybe right now it's focus on healing experiencing um and putting it out in the best way i can which is the interviews the the presentations the that those types of things on the website like I'm horrible at drawing, but sometimes stuff will come out and I just draw it out and scan it and put it on the website and say, it's this, it's time travel. This is how it would happen to me, like, you know, experiences. We have a couple of painters who joined us, our community, and um, they are very talented and they're very intuitive. They just, as we talk, as they watch our videos, they paint and at some point it would be great to combine you with our con in, in the same webinar, he would sh he would show you his pictures of mm -hmm. aliens, which he yes. downloaded, and you would comment who they are and how yes. they how and uh, who they are and yeah, energetically how, how, how the pictures can be improved to match their re real appearance. Yes, exactly. I like I'm I'm I have a very good visual memory and long term memory, so I. And energetically, the psychic aspect, it all works together. And as an artist, it just works as an identifying beings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I have that ability. Um, that would be an interesting experience to try out. All right, let's 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 plan it. Um, let's coordinate whatever time is good for you. We'll yep. coordinate with Khan. He's in Turkey. He's oh, in Turkey. Okay. So, so the time, I guess, I will have to figure it out. We'll yeah. figure it out. Yes, exactly. Yeah, definitely. Um, hopefully, maybe we can do a webinar where Jim comes in as well. The problem with Jim is that he is so so nice channeler. If he is there, we would be silent and just listen to him. But being <laughs> in his presence is very healing. Yes. He's, he has a, a certain, certain aspects of God, of the Creator. Yes. So he, the energy which comes from him is powerful so yeah he naturally dominates the discussion so okay. uh, i invite you to our webinars with jim uh, we can do three of us and that could be yes. good for you as well mm -hmm. yes i mean it's it's where to ask to care some of the questions that we're asking and to get answers like three way absolutely. absolutely just they are to care to pack whoever else the l it's like they might have broader aspect of the answer to add to the answer than just me. Excellent. Um, let's schedule a time. It's you know. Okay. It's possible. Yeah. We'll, we'll email each other and do it. Yes. Uh, let's yeah. finish with the galactic languages. Um, sure. Um, I will give you some chant, and then you will continue. And if you have any messages that come through, you can add them at the end, okay. and, yeah, and sure. we'll wrap up with that. Sure. <laughs> and I have from the audience, I have a few wonderful, wonderful, um, like, comments, like, sounds amazing there. So so it's it's okay. it's a great a great spirit in this webinar. Thank you very much. So I will start with the chant. Sure. Um, Do you have a translation? 
Yes, you were doing um, part Pleiadian, part reptilian, and part yes. Native American. Yes. So the translation is basically to not be afraid to work with your spiritual healing energies, to grow and work outwards, look within, and to use your natural intuition abilities to build on your soul growth aspect of whatever evolution cycle you are on, or even just discovering your life cycle path to ascension, to evolution, to life creation of everything that you experience, and to have a positive outlook on these experiences, to have a positive polarity in the energy shifts that we are all experiencing right now. Because we are all living beings and we are striving to be on a positive polarity and having a positive outlook on everything to what life gives us. And it's a learning experience. And, you know, sometimes it can be frustrating and tough, but don't give up as everything comes back eventually to light and love and peace and compassion and respect for each other. That was the interpretation that I was getting. Absolutely. Yeah, some days, not long ago, I just felt I'm tired of this life, right? It just, I lost interest. And mm -hmm. then you, you basically have to make a decision. And it's just, you know, a free will. Mm -hmm. You choose, you choose to stay. Mm -hmm. And um, when you're not sure, like, either to go into depression or maybe not. You just choose to smile, right? To say, whatever. Yes. I would smile and I will clear that sky. I'll make it sunny. Yes. Yes. So that's a choice, you know, clear up your skies. Yes. Yes. Right. Exactly. It's layers of life, layers of life force energy. And how do you navigate that? What, what choice do you make? Mm -hmm. What vibrates and resonates? What doesn't? It's like energy. Like I literally felt energy when you were chanting and then I was finishing the chant. It was like vibrating outwards and then inwards, outwards. Mm -hmm. Experiencing who we are. Yeah, shift. Up shift, and yes. Yes, yes, up exactly. And up, up and that's, that's the vibration I got from the chanting. Ground to your reality and then lift it up. Yes, yes exactly. Those perfect words for that. Thank you, Elena. Спасибо, Лена, за ваше интервью. Спасибо вам. Очень приятно было. Очень приятно было познакомиться лично. Да, с вами тоже. До свидания. Goodbye, everybody. And till next time. Yeah, till next time. We'll meet again. All right. Bye.